first, here's Tony with a new Chevy Caprice sedan. One of the surprises of the last Detroit Auto Show was a new Chevy Caprice, replacing a model that's been around since the 1970s. Those partial to full-size North American cars were able to breathe a sigh of relief when the announcement was made. Over the years, there's been lots of talk about downsizing this model or dropping it altogether. But rest assured that the new Caprice is just as big, roomy and powerful as any of its predecessors. Traditionalists will rejoice in the fact that this is a V8 engine rear-wheel drive car in the classic mold, with no size compromises whatsoever. Import fans will regard it as an oversized barge, but at least buyers still have a choice. Chevrolet's done an outstanding job in styling this car, and it must stand as one of the best-looking large sedans built anywhere in the world. With sleek aerodynamic lines, large glass areas, and a very tidy nose treatment, it looks great whichever way you view it. Rear wheel wells have spats partly covering the tires, and these add to a slim ground-hugging look. Fared in head and parking lights integrate neatly with a stylized grille, topped by one of those stand-up badges that I'm not quite so keen on. But looks are nothing without engineering excellence, and this new big Chevy has lots to commend it in that department. In fact, when I discussed the car with Chevrolet engineering people, they kept drawing my attention away from the styling and pointing out innovative technical features. The free power comes from a 5-litre cast iron block V8 using electronic fuel injection to develop a respectable 170 horsepower. This unit is based on earlier engines, but has a variety of upgrades to improve smoothness, power and economy. Standard transmission is a four-speed automatic. A power-assisted disc drum brake arrangement is featured, and surprisingly, anti-lock brakes are standard, a great safety advancement. The car should reach 100 km per hour in about nine seconds and fuel economy should be in the 12 litres per 100 kilometres range in general use. A basic Caprice Classic cost about $21,250, and our test car stick it out at $26,119. Chevrolet says that its new Caprice has more shoulder and hip room than its predecessor, with doors that open wider and higher for easy entry and exit. All models have a driver's side airbag passive restraint system. As you might expect on a car this big, its trunk is huge, and will accommodate more than 20 cubic feet of cargo. A cargo net helps keep small loads, grocery bags and the like in place. Many of my usual groans about Chevrolet interior design have been taken care of with this new model. For a start, there's lots of useful stowage space. An instrument and control layout is far superior to anything else in Chevy's range. In fact, all four doors have deep storage pockets, and there are also cup and coin holders provided. Here at last is a Chevrolet for long-distance touring with the whole family. Although I'm basically a fan of small cars, there's a lot to be said for buying a car like this if you have older kids or business associates to transport. People who like their cars big don't have much to choose from these days, especially in the more affordable price brackets. The only real contenders are the Ford Crown Victoria and the Mercury Grand Marquis, models themselves that are long overdue for a major update. Now, you're not a Land Yacht fan, I know, Ted. So what do you think about this one? I don't like this car at all, I have to be honest with you. It's not a, a, a wrap against GM, because they are making better products these days. I just hate the concept of this thing, the, the appearance. It looks like a beluga whale with four wheels to me. I just can't stand the way this thing looks. It has terribly soft suspension. It wallows through the corners. The brakes are really bad, as we'll probably get into later. There's not enough power. I just don't like anything about it. I will admit that for those that like a big car it has lots of elbow room and it's comfortable but you couldn't give me one of these cars in a nutshell well i totally disagree with that i think that it's for styling i think it's one of the best looking big cars that's designed anywhere i think it would stand up to anything except for some of the detailed trim and so forth well, what do you like about it the, that wonderful front grille or no. that big slash that runs <laughs> along the side of the car i like the front wheel i like the, I like the wheel spats at the back i like the look of the car i think the look of the car is very very good what i didn't like about it and I now reveal the fact that the brakes failed totally during my test mm -hmm. uh completely um, and I'm still waiting to hear from GM why. Um, but you still like the car? I still like the car because I, I'm, I'm still, even though GM haven't told me what happened, mm -hmm. I'm still prepared to believe it was something very unusual. Well, you know, despite the f I don't hold the brakes against GM. I mean, I, it's, it's 
terrible that it happened and you could have been hurt and a lot of other things but you know this was a, it's an early production model these things do happen but nonetheless I think this car is a lemon I, I, I make a prediction here you can call me on this later I guarantee this car is going to be problems no I don't think so I don't think so I think when this when the production is really underway uh, it's going to be like the old Caprice one of the most reliable cars you could buy these things would last for years and years there are lots of people with a quarter of a million miles on these cars very very happy with them mm -hmm. and I think there's uh, definitely a lot of people who want a big car well, I'm glad they're being served I've, I've, by GM I've, here I'm right. really glad they're being I've served I've never argued with that I've never argued with that market I just think okay well let me sum up here it's ugly let me sum up okay what I didn't like a little bit oversized um, exterior trim some of the bits were falling off it I didn't like that either on the plus side, lots of things, but interior space, just excellent. Driver side airbag was a very good thing to have, and stowage was the best on any GM car I've driven. Driving dollar value, I give this three quarters of a tank.